me here. This is the first time I've been on the UCLA campus. It sure is a beautiful place, isn't it? Oh, look, there's the building I've been looking for. Schoenberg Hall. You've shown such an interest in music lately, Lisa. I thought you might like to see some of the things inside it. Come on, I'll give you a treat. Okay. On the first floor, they have display cases with musical instruments dating back hundreds of years. And over there on the right, they have the music library. The theater's up there. Well, Lisa, this building is full of music. In fact, so much music, it would take you almost five years to listen to it all. I don't hear anything. Oh, well, that's because all this music is written down. It's written in a special language called musical notation, or the language of music. In this music library, you can find almost any kind of music you can think of. Why, look, there are American folk songs you can take home and play on your guitar. Yeah. As I and this book of church music, this was written over a thousand years ago. A thousand years? That's right. And this music here, this music is the music of a complete orchestra. It shows the conductor the music being played by every instrument. I don't see how anybody can read all that. Well, we'll consider how the language of music works. But first, what is music anyway? Now, do you think music is just any old sound you happen to hear? Oh, come on. That old car horn can't make any music. Hmm? Or can it? <laughs> Listen to these sounds. Would you call this music or just noise? I call that noise. Listen to these sounds. Is this noise or music? What do you think made the difference? Well, the conductor directed the cars to honk in a certain way, and that made a song? Right. When we control sounds and make them do what we want them to do, when we put them into an interesting pattern, we create music. Now, in what ways do you think we can control sound, Lisa? Well, we can make it loud or soft. We can make a sound higher or lower. Right. That is called controlling pitch. Well, I've heard of pitch before. You can also control how long a sound lasts, can't you? And the length of time between sounds? Right. And another term for length of time is duration. When we make patterns with duration, we create rhythm. Now, we can also change how a note sounds by using different instruments. Now, you see, the two notes have the same pitch, but they sound different, don't they? They do. How long have people been using the pitch and rhythm of sounds to make music? Well, historians know that man has been experimenting with musical sounds for thousands of years.
Long ago, music lovers began to look for some way to capture their melody so that they could be played again and again. <laughs> That's a funny way to hold on to a melody. Can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. Well, if people have been writing down their words for so long, why couldn't they have been a language of music? Oh, for centuries, composers and musicians did try different ways of writing their music down. notation or language of music that we use today began to take form. Today, a musician can read a page of written music and play some of Mozart's compositions just the way he played them years ago. Take a closer look at how this language of music works. Okay. You see, musical notation is, well, it's really a picture of music. I mean, it, it shows us, well, how high or, or how low the pitch of each sound is. Then it shows us the, the order of the sound or notes and the duration of each of the notes. With the help of our old friend up there, let's see how we can make a picture of pitch. Let's make the low notes down here. And as we go higher in pitch, the ball goes up. Now we'll bounce the ball down the steps. Those notes are going down a scale, aren't they? Exactly. A scale is a series of steps going up or down in pitch. If we give each step a letter name, we can ask our friend here to give us any note we want. How about the middle C? A, an E, the G below middle C. Beautiful. Now we're going to paint five lines on the wall. Do you know what five lines like this are called? Sure. It's called a staff. Right. Now what do you notice about the lines of the staff and the letters? Well, some letters are on the lines and some are in the spaces between the lines. Don't we need another staff for the lower notes? Or do. Good. Now these two staves have special signs called clefts to tell them apart. The higher one is the treble clef. And the lower one? The bass clef. Right. Now most melodies are written in the treble clef. So let's look more closely at it. We'll move the C up where we can see it and put part of a line through it. That's to show us one step below D, isn't it? Right. Now, how hard would it be to remember where the letter notes go if you only had the lines and spaces to look at? Not too hard. Some notes are on the lines, then some are in the spaces, and there are really only seven different letters used. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. That's right. Because the more we go up the scale, we just use the same letter names over and over again. But can you hear why? Sure, the notes sound the same, only higher in pitch. Right. Now let's see if you can remember where the notes go. What's this? And this? D, E, F, G. Next. No, 
not A. A. After G, it starts over at A. And that's not hard to learn. Musicians know what string to press or key to push to make the sound of each note. But you know that notes don't look like this, right? Right. They look like this, or this, or this, or this, or this. Well, that's because we need to know more than pitch. We need to know how long each note lasts. Remember duration? Uh-huh. Let's see how important duration can be in creating a melody. We'll play these three notes. C, D, E, over and over again. First, we'll make the C last for two counts, or beats, and the D and E, one beat each. This time, the D gets two beats. change? Yeah. We show how many beats a note gets by making it a certain shape. When we write a note this way, we call it a whole note, and we know it usually lasts for four beats. One, two, three, four. A half note is written this way. How many beats would it get, Lisa? It should get half as many beats as a whole note. One, two. And a quarter note gets? One beat. One. Whole notes, half notes, quarter notes. Now that we can show both pitch and duration with written notes, let's write a melody. Okay. Can I see that again? Sure. the melody in a different way. You just watch the colored notes. I can follow that, okay? Well, that was pretty easy for you. Now, here's a melody that you've heard many times before, but let's see how long it takes you to figure out what it is. Fire away. All right. Here's the first note. Now, we'll tap out the beats for you. Okay, let's go through it again. Begin. I think I know what it is. Are you sure? Well... <laughs> Would you like to see the words? Okay. Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony. Stuck a feather in his cap and called it macaroni. Oh, there's <laughs> lots more we can learn about musical notation. The language of music. You can say that again. Like what's this? Or this? Or that? Or, or those lines? Or these lines? Or this? Or that? Right. But why don't you review what we did see today? Okay. Pitch. Rhythm. Scale. Sap. Treble play. Bass play. Whole notes. Half notes. Quarter notes. Musical notation.
weren't kidding when you said this building is full of music. Would you like to come back again sometime? Sure. Well, there's an awful lot more to see, you know. They have a wonderful musical instrument collection, and they have a musical instrument library. They have practice rooms. What we really should do is come back for a concert some night. Then we can go backstage, we can talk to the musicians, we can ask them questions, we can talk to some of the student musicians. There's just so much to learn about music. But if you love music, your education never stops.